right now. All right, we are starting off with a live look out at the Alamo City. Look at that. It is gorgeous out there. Picturesque 40 degrees. So it's a brisk Sunday yeah. morning here in San Antonio, but it is going to heat up. It is beautiful out there right now. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock. It is Sunday, December 17th. Thank you so much for starting Good your morning, morning with us. So, yes, December 17th. It's starting to feel a little bit more like Christmas, at least in the mornings. Yes. Yesterday, kind of the same start ended up being gorgeous. Exactly. And take yesterday's weather and copy and paste it to today. But even in fact, we'll be warmer in the afternoon than we were yesterday. But it is cold, Max, to yeah. start the day. Definitely. Take a look outside at temperatures 38 in San Antonio, 39 in New Braunfels, 39 in Del Rio. Good morning, Eagle Pass. It's 36 degrees, 42, 32 rather in Kerrville. So just below freezing in Kerrville, just below freezing in Bernie and Bolverde and Comfort. Some pockets in the Hill Country experiencing a brief freeze, but temperatures are already on the rise. Cold start to the day, but this afternoon we're going to be in the 70s. It'll be 71 in San Antonio, upper 60s for areas like Bernie and Bulverde, but 71 in Kerrville, 71 in Hondo, Nixon, Smiley, 71, 71 in Yavaldi. The reason for the quick warm up is because it is so dry outside, so much so in fact, Here's your static shock forecast. Dry air creates static shocks very easily, so be aware of that today. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of dry air out there. In fact, a lot of dry air for most of the week. Dry and pleasant most of the week with chilly mornings and comfortable afternoons. However, by Thursday and Friday, some dampness is going to return to the forecast. And then we head into the weekend. And of course, Sunday is Christmas Eve. Monday, next Monday is Christmas Day. So coming up, I've got your Christmas sneak peek forecast. Max. Thank you, Sarah. A tragic story to tell you about an Army veteran hit and dragged by a car back in September. We now know he has passed away, but his family, they are still fighting, searching for the person responsible for this crash. 75-year-old Robert Juarez hospitalized after this crash on Whitewood near military. Now, San Antonio police say Juarez was in his scooter when a vehicle backed into him. It tipped over, so Juarez was in the road. Police say then the driver of a white GMC SUV ran over Juarez, dragging him down the road. That driver, who now faces a felony charge, still on the loose. They have not been caught. Juarez's daughter saying she still wants justice. I want to make sure, again, that these people see, you know, that they get what they deserve, which is justice. Like, they need to pay for what they did. Now she says she's still fighting to prevent her father's case from going cold. So if you have any information that can help investigators find the person who did this, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number you can find on KSAT.com. It is 210-224-STOP. Another crime to tell you about, Kerrville police arresting a woman who they believe shot and killed a man. But that's not what the woman told police when they arrived when she called 911. This is what we know right now. Yesterday morning, 26-year-old Ashley Castillo told the 911 operator that the victim, 22-year-old Damon Tamke, had shot himself in the head inside the apartment on Singing Wind Drive. Now, a handgun was found in the apartment. Evidence gathered over the court of the investigation. Well, it led investigators to arrest and charge Castillo with murder. Okay, we talk about big picture things a lot. We talk about inflation, how times are tough for so many families. And for you out there watching, you've probably heard us reference the Federal Reserve. We know they use, infl they use interest rates to help fight inflation. So to help break down what is happening, he is already on the screen. Monik Dillon with Victory Capital. So, Monik, just to start us off, what is the exact purpose of the Fed raising interest rates? Uh, so first of all, thanks for having me today. Um, well, one of the things they were trying to do is cool down the economy. And, and why were they doing that? They were doing it to get inflation back in control. So after the COVID pandemic, uh, when they had the lower rates, basically putting a lot of liquidity and free money out in the marketplace, uh, it pushed prices up. And that became a real challenge for, for the consumers and the economy. So that's what they were trying to do when they're raising interest rates is cool down the economy and lower inflation back to their target. So when we, we rise, when we raise interest rates, obviously the hope is to bring down inflation, but there are other implications, other repercussions of these higher rates. What are they and, and how do the consumers see the alternative impacts? Sure. You know, one of the things is just higher borrowing costs, right? So when, when the Fed increases interest rates, 
costs on mortgages increase. You know, we saw them get close to 8% for 30 year mortgages recently. Auto loans get more expensive. And then credit card debt becomes even harder to pay off because those rates go up over time as, as the Fed increases rates. So not only is inflation challenging for the average consumer, then on the back end of it, it's costing more to borrow money. And, and that is by design how the Fed pulls down the economy because that causes people to spend less and then that's how you can maybe get inflation back into control. So it's almost sandwiching families. You have to fight inflation and then it is more expensive to use your credit card to get a car to get a house. Mm -hmm. That's okay. right. That makes sense. So for families watching, what are ways, actions that they can take that they single-handedly can help fight inflation? Yeah, you know, I always talk about it's important, particularly like this time of year, the end of the year is, and the new year is about to begin. Sit down and create a family budget. It's so important to know and to have a plan on where you're going to spend your money and where money's coming in, especially when the cost of goods is going up. So your groceries are costing more, any other uh, clothing's costing more. Everything you think about can, is, is costing more than it did probably a couple of years ago. So you have to sit down and say, where am I going to actually spend that money? And, and part of that is, you know, there's saving for a rainy day because what we don't know is the higher interest rates, what are they going to do to the economy ultimately in 2024 and beyond? So saving for that rainy, uh, rainy day. The other thing is if you have uh, assets to invest or you have a, a little bit left over to invest or you're worried about the future, being in the market is very important because uh, trying to time it is, is going to be very difficult on when the right time is to get back into the market. And then other things like ancillary things like, you know, college tuition is impacted by inflation. So college savings plans can help you with that over time and, and things like that. So um, there's a number of different ways that, that families can address it, but um, none of them are silver bullet, of course. Of course. And we know we have a lot of families watching this morning that, that maybe don't have that much excess to throw in the market or something of that nature. Have there been positive silver linings almost of higher interest rates, you know, higher yields for savings accounts? Yeah, that's definitely one thing that's been a positive for the average consumer. So somebody who might have been just keeping some cash or, you know, the rainy day fund in cash now can actually earn a decent rate on it. Uh, so whereas cash is essentially become a, an asset class, if you will, where it wasn't uh, when rates were at zero. And so what's that allowing people to do is actually uh, combat inflation in a way because it's trying to give them an, a rate of return to, to keep up with uh, the cost of goods going up. But at some point, um, that can't, that, that'll have to change and that's not sustainable. So then they need to start thinking about what do I do with that? Do I do I start to go into some fixed income a little bit? Do I start to, you know, put it away in, in stocks and things like that? But they have to think about that going forward. OK, you kind of alluded to it. 2024, obviously 2023 has been difficult to anticipate with all the ups and downs of the Fed. So what is your outlook for next year? One of the things I think investors or just the, the average consumer can can expect is, you know, this year has been a, a real volatile one for interest rates themselves. Um, people trying to guess what the Fed is going to do. Are they done raising rates? Are they going to cut rates? And, and so I think that'll continue into 2024 where um, we'll see if, you know, they, they how many times they cut rates, uh, how much they cut rates by. But that's going to have a big impact as the market tries to predict that, if you will. Um, the other thing is there's a lot of variables that are probably going to come up in 2024. that will create some volatility, too. Like there's an election. There could be geopolitical conflicts. And so I think the best thing to do in that environment is to be diversified. Right. Don't have all your eggs in one basket. Um, you want to have a diversified portfolio if you are investing in the market. All right. Good advice. Monique Dillon with Victory Capital. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And for anyone who missed any of the interview or wants to go back, watch it, take some notes, figure out what you're going to do. You're going to have it on KSAT.com throughout the morning. Time now, just about 810, 40 degrees. Still ahead, Apple, the product, not the food, introducing some new safety measures to the devices, how it can help you if your phone gets stolen. Plus, we talk about the cooler temps. 40 degrees out there right now. Some of these cooler temps might have a big impact on your skin. We have some advice how to keep your skin, well, make sure it doesn't dry out. We'll be right back.
morning, welcome back. So, if you look down on the bright part of your screen, it's 40 degrees out. We know the weather can have a significant impact on your skin. As we've been seeing, cooler temps here, at least in the morning in San Antonio, it is important to know how to take care of it. Well, Mandy Gaither has some tips to protect you through these winter months. It's the season of dry skin. If you're feeling the itch, you're not alone. We have the heat running inside and then the humidity levels also drop, leaving the air and skin pretty parched. Dermatologist Shilpi Caterpaul with Cleveland Clinic says eczema can flare up in the wintertime, but your skin can feel dry whether you have a pre-existing condition or not. She says the first line of defense is a humidifier. You want to set it to at least 50% or higher, and that can push some of that moisture back into the skin. Ditch the long, hot showers that can add to dryness, opting for shorter, lukewarm ones instead, and use mild, fragrance-free soap that moisturizes. After your shower, you want to pat dry instead of rubbing your skin. Um, by rubbing, it increases friction, and then friction is going to strip the skin of that moisture and also increase dryness. Within five minutes of drying off, Cater Paul says it's time to moisturize to help keep skin healthy and hydrated. You want to look for fragrance-free lotions that contain an ingredient called ceramide. Ceramide is what's going to help to repair the skin barrier and trap that water in the skin. Finally, watch how you wash your clothes, Cater Paul says, by detergents and fabric softeners that are fragrance free. A lot of that fragrance can be trapped in the skin and if that's touching us daily that can lead to more irritation and make eczema worse. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. And it's definitely a day that you want a little <laughs> extra hand lotion, a little extra chapstick because it's so dry outside with two points in the 30s. One pop quiz. Okay, okay I'm probably going to get wrong. Let's see. Okay, let's see it. Max, why are we able to see temperatures in the 30s in the morning and in the 70s in the afternoon? Because we live in San Antonio. Okay, yep. But it's also <laughs> because the air is dry. Dry air warms and cools down quickly. So I'll give you a passing grade. I'll get like half credit. Sounds good. Okay, outside right now, cirrus clouds out there, those high thin wispy clouds, which are completely made of ice crystals. 38 degrees, northwest winds at about five miles per hour. As we take a look at temperatures out there this morning, it's 32 in Kerrville. So we do have a brief light freeze up in the hill country, but temperatures are already on the rise. 37 in Uvalde, 39 in Del Rio. Good morning, Carissa Springs, 36 degrees, 35 in Kennedy, 35 in Gonzales, and 39 in New Braunfels. As we zoom in a little bit closer, still below freezing for Bull Verde, Comfort, and Kerrville, but Bernie getting above freezing now. 39 in Converse, 39 in New Braunfels, and 36 in Hondo. As we take a look at the weather setup, there's those wispy cirrus clouds moving in over San Antonio, but that's it. It's going to be a quiet day across the state of Texas. Different story out to the east. You can see there's quite Quite a bit of rain around dual system of low pressures uh, areas of low pressure. We've got some rain across the Great Lakes and a lot of rainfall for parts of Georgia and the Carolinas. We've got this systems pulling in dry air from the north. That's why it's so dry outside. And fun fact of the day in San Antonio right now, it's 38 degrees. It is colder in San Antonio this morning than it is in New York and Washington, D.C. And even colder than in Cleveland, Ohio and parts of the Midwest. West uh, San Antonio is colder than Chicago right now this morning, all because of that dry air in place. And in the wake of those lows, as they move off to the east, this high pressure system is going to settle over, keeping us dry for most of the week in San Antonio. By Thursday, Friday, there will be a bit of a weather pattern change. But for today, it's just going to be nice and sunny and quickly becoming comfortable after this cold morning. 54 at 10, 66 at noon, so a quick 30 degree temperature jump in the span of a few hours by this afternoon 71 around three or four o'clock and then this evening temperatures will quickly cool under clear skies if you have sunday night plans especially outdoor plans make sure to bring the jacket with you it's going to get into the 40s by 9 p.m as for forecast highs in your neighborhood it's going to be 71 in del rio 69 in gonzalez 73 in canyon lake 71 in fredericksburg and kerrville 73 in Catula and laredo 
Toledo and 71 in Hondo. Now I mentioned that it's very dry outside. As we take a look at our humidity forecast, it's going to stay dry through about Wednesday. Not quite as dry Wednesday as it will be today through Tuesday, but still pleasant. It's by Thursday and Friday that we start to see humidity become noticeable. Not only will you feel it outside, but you may see it. It looks like we could have some mist and drizzle as on Thursday, but especially by Friday around San Antonio, and that will not be amounting to much. Coming up in the next half hour, we're going to be talking a little bit about rainfall potential across the state of Texas, but here in San Antonio, really just some mist and drizzle possible Friday, Saturday, and even a small rain chance on Sunday, which is Christmas Eve. So as we look at your sneak peek forecast a week from today, Christmas Eve on Sunday, a small rain chance, but temperatures should rebound to near 70 degrees in the afternoon. Then by Christmas Day, it's starting to look like it will be a dry day on Christmas Day perhaps a chilly morning and a cool afternoon in the 60s. So not too hot, not too cold on Christmas Day itself. As for the rest of this week, though, we do expect chilly mornings in the 40s and 50s, cool afternoons and comfortable afternoons rather in the 60s and 70s, and then temperatures uh, really starting to be a little warm in the mornings when we start to see the rain chance work its way back in by Friday. Coming up, more on those rainfall potential totals through the week, Max. Okay, so a good day to walk around? Great day to walk around. Oh my goodness. 71 yeah. and sunny, this is beautiful. Yeah, and then by tonight, if you want to do some Christmas lights or things like that, it's going to be chilly enough that you'll want the jacket, but hey, it'll feel a little bit more like Christmas outside. Love that. All right, time now, just about 820, 40 degrees. We got a lot more to come here on GMSA. The latest information on important recalls that you and your family should know about, especially as it pertains to food that could be in your pantry, including one that has been ongoing, even including people getting sick. What you need to know, that way you can throw the food away. Plus, take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, seven, six, five, fireball seven, daily four, Five, six, zero, five, fireball three, cash five, 11, 17, 27, 28, 32, Lotto, Texas, 11, 24, 41, 43, 46, 47. Here we go, Powerball three, nine, 10, 20, 62. Powerball is 25, power play three. Good luck, we'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back and happy Sunday. We have some consumer news to tell you about American surprising economists across the country. We spent a little bit more than we thought we would in November. According to a report from the Commerce Department, retail sales rebounded in November and rebounded about 0.3 percent after declining in October. That means that we are spending probably more than we should. Now, it does point to inflation possibly easing up and the job market remaining strong because people have money to spend or they're just spending more on their credit card, which they're going to have to pay back later. All right, now to your phone. iPhone, well, and Apple, trying to keep thieves away from your personal information. A lot of people have really vital, important financial information on their phones, so the company is currently working on a feature that will make it more difficult for thieves to get into your device. The stolen device protection feature, it's actually going to add biometrics, which means users are going to have to scan their face or their finger to access the important data. That extra security measure is only enacted when a user, a user is away from a familiar location like work or like home. Okay, if you are a Starbucks fan, listen up. Starbucks feeling extra generous this holiday season. The coffee chain giving out free hot chocolates every weekend for the rest of December. All you have to do, be a Starbucks rewards member. Sarah Spivey, you Starbucks rewards member? Me neither. I'm not. I'm not either. We I, might have, we're probably the only two millennials that are not. I was going to say, we might have to <laughs> jump on here. All right, so if you are, and you're listening, members can also get half off a drink every Thursday afternoon through the month of December from noon to 6 p.m. Here's the good news, Sarah Spivey. We can both sign up for free on Starbucks website or their apps. Okay, give me all your information and I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> Time now, just about 826, 41 degrees. We got a lot more to come here on GMSA, including more on the weather. Taking a live look out there. We are starting off in the 40s, but it is going to be a picture perfect day in San Antonio. I make fun of people on the East Coast because it is cold. It is raining over there, but here it is gorgeous. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. 
Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. So happy Sunday. We talked about it yesterday. Parents uh -huh. are in town from the East Coast. They didn't know what to wear in terms of the weather. <laughs> So yesterday we, we planned to walk around. We did walk around and it was funny because in the shadows, it was a little cold, it was yeah, windy. Yeah, in the shade. But then in the, the sun, it was perfect. Yeah, it's funny. This is that time of year where you dress in layers if you're in San Antonio because you need the jackets in the morning and you do not need them in the afternoon. So that's what you can tell them today. Bring, bring, bring they a might be sweater. watching. If you're watching, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for watching. Yeah, wear layers today. <laughs> yeah, in fact, it's cold out there right now. Here's a look at temperatures this morning. 38 in San Antonio, 34 in Kerrville, 39 in New Braunfels, 38 in Uvalde. It briefly reached freezing in Fredericksburg, Kerrville, Bernie. Those areas briefly saw freezing. Today in San Antonio, we got down to 36 degrees earlier this morning. But guess what? By the afternoon, it's going to be 71. That, my friends, is a 35 degree temperature swing from the start of the day to the forecast in the afternoon. That is an impressive temperature swing, especially in winter when the sun angle is a little lower. And the reason for that impressive temperature swing is because it's so dry outside. You can feel how dry it is. And it's gonna be dry and pleasant for most of the week with chilly mornings, comfortable afternoons. It isn't until Thursday and Friday that we start to see some dampness return to the forecast. We'll talk about that and how much rain we could potentially see. Don't get your hopes up for too much. And then beyond the weekend, we've got Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So I'll have a look at that forecast coming up for you in just a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. It has been a busy weekend for the police. Police scanners far from quiet through at least the last 36 hours. These six shootings all happened between 8 and 10 20 p.m. Friday night across the city. Four of them happening just within 12 minutes of each other. Two of those shootings turned out to be deadly. So this is what we know right now. This is the shooting just north of downtown. This is an apartment complex in the 3200 block of North Loop 1604 West. 22 year old Donovan Bowie called police saying he shot his girlfriend just after 930. Now, when investigators got there, Donovan Bowie surrendered to officers. The woman, though, she was pronounced dead on the scene. Now, the reasoning for the shooting remains unknown, but what we do know is that Donovan Bowie is now facing charges of murder. About 10 minutes later, police on the east side, they were called to a different shooting. This one, the intersection of Mittman and Arthur. Now, witnesses there telling police a man was simply standing near the intersection when a vehicle drove by. Someone was inside. Someone shot him. Now, the vehicle drove off. That man eventually taken to a nearby hospital. He also died. As for the suspects, police still investigating. Again, these are just two of the six shootings that happened within two and a half hours of each other. Friday night, four of them in a 12 minute span. We have a full breakdown when, where, all six happened. You can find that article right now. Just head to ksat.com. Well, heading overseas, protests continue in countries all across the world, but a new protest arising in Israel after the Israeli military admitted they accidentally killed three hostages. The IDF in a video saying that the shooting of those hostages was against the rules of engagement, stating that the shooting occurred in combat and under pressure. ABC's Johnny Fernandez has the details on what Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called an unbearable tragedy. Saturday, protesters gathered in Tel Aviv demanding answers after their Israeli military admitted to accidentally shooting and killing three Israeli hostages in northern Gaza on Friday. The men identified as 28-year-old Yotam Haim, 26-year-old Elon Shamritz, and 22-year-old Samir Talahaki. Prime Minister Netanyahu calling the deaths an unbearable tragedy. According to the IDF's preliminary investigation, a soldier saw them as a threat and opened fire, killing two instantly. The third man was injured and ran back into the building. Someone then cried help in Hebrew. The IDF then saying the battalion commander ordered his troops to stop firing, but another burst was fired, killing the third hostage. Uh, the IDF is doing everything we can. Uh, there's been uh, multiple successes. And there will also be mistakes. IDF Lieutenant General Hertzi Halavi releasing a video statement saying the hostages did everything possible so Israeli troops would understand, being shirtless so they wouldn't be suspected of carrying explosives, and waving a white cloth 
But he said tensions overcame the situation and admitting the shooting was against the rules of engagement. That is forbidden to shoot at someone who raises a white flag and seeks to surrender. So far, at least 20 Israeli hostages have died and more than 100 hostages are thought to remain in Gaza. Confirmation Saturday that another one was killed in Hamas captivity, 27-year-old Inbar Hyman. She tried to run on October 7th, but was captured by Hamas terrorists on motorcycles at the Rim Music Festival. Since the war began, more than 18,000 people have died in Gaza, according to the Hamas run Gaza Health Ministry. Johnny Fernandez, ABC News, New York. Out of the latest recalls, Quaker Oats recalling several products because of salmonella concerns. Again, the company hasn't received any reports of infections related to the food, but they are still asking customers to throw out their granola bars and cereals to avoid any possible sickness. To see a full list of the recall, the recalled granola, we have that, ksat.com. And another recall to tell you about this one, an actual salmonella outbreak linked to cantaloupe. Uh, it stands at 302 cases across 42 states. We actually know four people have even died from the salmonella outbreak. Whole cantaloupes, they are now being recalled. They're sold nationwide at Aldi, Trader Joe's, Quick Trip, Kroger, Sprouts, and Racetrack. The CDC also warning not to eat pre-cut cantaloupe if the brand isn't posted on the label. Okay, back here at home, we got one win for the Spurs, all right? We broke the 18 loss streak, so let's see if we can start a winning streak, and today's a perfect day to do that. Well, any day is a perfect day to do that, but this one specifically because it is Tony Parker's Hall of Fame game. It is happening today, 2.30 at the game at halftime. Fans are going to receive a free shirt. There's also going to be Tony Parker-themed games and merchandise. Parker will be at the game during the halftime tribute ceremony for his re-raising of the retired jersey banner with the newly embellished Hall of Fame status. All right, the Mexican restaurant failing its health inspection last month, and that was the second time in just as many months. Tim Gerber paying that restaurant a special visit this week, asking special questions about the problems behind their kitchen door. Mexican restaurant located in the 3700 block of Nogalito Street failed their November inspection with a low score of 60. This after failing another inspection back in September. They got a 64 on that one. This time around, they racked up 21 health code violations. They were improperly cooling foods. The inside of the ice machine needed to be cleaned and sanitized to remove a buildup and the dishwashing machine wasn't sanitizing the dishes. A worker was cutting onions with bare hands. Another employee dropped a thermometer on the floor, picked it up, wiped it off with a paper towel, and was about to use it on some food before the inspector stepped in and stopped them. I stopped by this week to see why they failed two inspections in a row, but was told there was no manager available to speak to me at that time. I also noticed the business hadn't posted the inspection report which they were also cited for. Tienda Centro America, located in the 3900 block of San Pedro, earned a 76 on their inspection last month. They were selling food that was improperly labeled. Knives were stored with food debris on them. They were told to check for pest activity and they were storing food in non-food grade containers, including plastic shoe boxes and t-shirt bags. The business also had its license suspended due to a clogged grease trap. They were told to clear the drain and do a deep cleaning to remove sewage debris. I dropped by this week to see just how long they were shut down. A manager refused to go on camera but said they were only closed about an hour. A reinspection was required to reopen. Mary Chula Mexican Food, located in the 5,000 block of West Commerce, earned a 76 on their recent inspection. They had to throw out raw meat that was being kept in a cold unit that was too warm. They also tossed out black moldy produce that had a foul stench. The dishwasher wasn't cleaning dishes properly. The business also cited for using unapproved chemicals for pest control, including a tracking powder that they were instructed should never be used in the kitchen. Meanwhile, a few roaches were also found there in the kitchen. The business was in need of a thorough cleaning. 
They were also told to not feed the birds in the back of the business and to not allow miners in the kitchen when the business is open. A reinspection was ordered. From behind the kitchen door, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. I'm now just about 840, 43 degrees. We got a lot more to come here on GMSA. We're taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Look at that, not a cloud in the sky. It is beautiful out there. A little cold now, but it is gonna warm up. We're gonna check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. San Antonio is Military City USA, and we have some amazing local organizations that step up and help out our military men and women. One of those organizations, Soldiers Angels. That is why this morning on Leading SA, Amy Palmer with the organization is joining us. Good morning, Amy. Hi, good morning. Thanks for having me. Of course, thanks for joining us this morning. So for anyone out there who doesn't know about Soldiers Angels, tell us about you guys and what your mission is. Soldiers Angels is a national nonprofit organization. We provide support to our service members, wounded heroes, and veterans of all generations. Um, we are a national organization and we're headquartered here right here in San Antonio. We were started 20 years ago by General Patton's family. That is amazing. So tell us about the Adopt a Family program. We are actually coming right down to the wire on our adopt a family program this year. We expanded eligibility to include active duty guard and reservists that are in inactivated and activated. And so because we did expand our parameters, we had a lot of applications this year that were just too good to pass up on getting them in the program. Right now we have 370 families still waiting for adoption in the program. So we're hoping we can um, encourage viewers to get online today and, and adopt one of these families and get them helped for the holidays. And so when viewers out there, when they do help adopt a family, what does that entail? It's not too late. You know, of course, with online retailers, you can do things in 24 hours or less these days, but um, they would go in, register to volunteer with us. They can search for a family so they can see family size, the location where they live. They can read a little bit about them in their wish list, select the family they want to support. They um, will provide at least one gift or uh, toy for a child and then a $50 to $100 gift card to go for their holiday meal. So it's super easy. It's not super expensive. You know, people... Um, can do that little or they can do a lot depending on what they'd like to do. But um, we have a lot of families out there and, and many of them won't have any gifts for their children this season without the adopt a family program. So we're really hoping that we can get these families adopted. That is amazing. So the adopt a family, obviously that is priority number one right now, but what are other ways that people can step up and help out the organization? Absolutely. You know, that is our first priority, but we have great things throughout the year. Um, we have campaigns all year long. Um, our Warm Feet for War sock drive with blankets, winter coat drives. Um, we also have a warehouse where we pack items. We're still packing holiday stockings at our warehouse in, here in town. So people can volunteer on our website at soldiersangels.org. They can, of course, donate money. Um, if we get cash donations, we're gonna be using those to buy some gift cards for some families in, uh, you know, in need in the last few minutes. So monetary donations are always welcome, um, but there's always, a opportunity to get involved at soldiersangels.org. All right, Amy Palmer, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Anyone who missed any part of the interview that does want to step up and help out, we're going to have all that information on ksat.com throughout the morning. And speaking of the morning, it is a cold morning, Sarah Spivey. Are we going to start heating up anytime soon? You know, we are. We're already starting to warm up. We got down to 36 degrees this morning and temperatures are starting to get into the 40s in some locations. By 10, we'll be in the 50s by noon in the 60s and the high today in the 70s max. So your parents visiting from the Northeast, yeah. they're gonna like the weather this afternoon. It's a relish in the heat a little bit. <laughs> yeah, taking a look outside right now, we've got some of those wispy high thin cirrus clouds. Here's a look at temperatures around South Central Texas, around the San Antonio metro area. Bernie Stage airfield right on the uh, border there of Kendall and Bear County was down to 32, but it's already 41. So you can see quick warm up happening. It's still slightly below freezing in Bulverde. It's 39 in New Braunfels, 45 Lost Maples, 36 in Hondo, 43 in Pleasanton, 36 in Kerrville. Temperatures quickly rising right now. Just by 10, we're going to be at 54 under mostly sunny skies. Noon, 66, completely sunny in the afternoon. Unlike yesterday when we had a few gusts up to 25 miles per hour, we're going to have a light and variable wind today. 71 this afternoon between about 3, 4 o'clock. And then if you have evening plans, maybe you're going to go look at some light or enjoy some time with your family later on tonight. Make sure to bundle up because it's going to get chilly fairly quickly by 
nine, it should be in the 40s. So a chilly evening on deck after a warm afternoon. Here's a look at the afternoon temperatures forecast 71 in Kerrville, 71 in Del Rio, 73 Catula and Laredo, upper 60s in Rock Springs. It'll be 73 in Austin, 71 in Fredericksburg. Around the San Antonio metro area, near 70 in Bernie, Bulverde, Helotus. In fact, near 70 for all of us. We're going to be running some five degrees above the average of 65 today. All in all, a nice day after the cold start. Now, why are we warming up so easily? Well, it's because we've got very dry air in place. Dew points in the 30s. This, my friends, is chapstick weather. You need a little extra chapstick because it's nice and dry outside, and it's going to stay very dry through about Wednesday. Wednesday will still be pleasant, but by Thursday and Friday, that's when you'll notice some mugginess outside, especially by Friday. By Friday and Thursday and Friday, we could even start to see some mist and drizzle in the forecast. Very light rain Thursday and Friday for us, but a few days here with pretty dry air in place and nice weather. Speaking of our next rain chance, by Thursday, there's going to be an upper level low pressure system spinning energy and bringing it to uh, parts of Texas. Now, the main area of rain should be up near the Dallas Fort Worth area. Once again, we're going to be on the tail end of things. Just some light rain, some mist and drizzle Thursday, Friday, and even potentially early on Sunday morning, which is Christmas Eve, before that low moves off to the east and allows for us to have a dry Christmas day. More on that forecast in a bit, but first I want to talk about rainfall potential. Again, doesn't look great for San Antonio. Really, the area of rain will be up near the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Yeah, they're not dealing with the kind of drought situation that we're dealing here in San Antonio, where we could see perhaps a few tenths of an inch of rainfall if you're lucky. Uh, this is really going to be a lot like last week where we had some areas of light rain, some drizzle, and that was about it. And we need the rain. Uh, we've got extreme drought around San Antonio. So looking at your forecast, your extended forecast here, in the mornings will be chilly over the next few days with comfortable afternoons. Rain returns to the forecast on Friday. But by Christmas Eve on Sunday, I think we'll be starting to uh, wrap up the rainfall. Just a small rain chance on Christmas Eve when we'll get up to about 70. But Christmas Day should be nice, not too hot, not too cold in the 60s. We'll be back with more news after the break. Good morning and welcome back. How about this for a Christmas gift? A cheap find at a thrift store turned into a six-figure windfall for a Virginia woman. So the vase you look, is it vase or vase? I mean, this is 600,000, so uh, 100,000, so vase. Okay, That's so this vase was part, so <laughs> initially it was vase because it was $3.99. Okay. okay. Then it sold for over $107,000, so it transferred from vase to vase. To vase. Mm. Yes, it did. All right, and the bottle-shaped featured, uh, sorry, the bottle-shaped design features a swirling pattern, which with translucent red and opaque seafoam green glass. Like Christmas. Yeah, the woman said she noticed the vase mm. immediately, recognizing markings indicating that it was of a high-end Murano glass made in Italy. Turns out she was right. So the, the vase initially valued between thirty dollars and $50,000, but as we told you, sold for more than double the top estimate. All right, speaking of the holidays, if you're a fan of Home Alone movies, well, we have the ultimate experience for you. Spoiler, it is not cheap. The Plaza Hotel <laughs> in New York City offering a Home Alone 2 package. Okay, how much is this? Guests can do almost everything Kevin McAllister does in the movie Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Right. It features a four-hour limousine ride to see attractions like the Empire State Building, Rockefeller Center, Radio City Music Hall, and Central Park. All right, before we see the numbers, how much are you guessing? How, night, how many nights is it? I think it's, I think it's one night. I'm going to go $4,000. Okay. Rates vary, but it can be added to any standard room or suite for a little less than $2,000. Yeah, but then the suites. So, right. You know, you're, you're spending $4,000. <laughs> okay. Chilly mornings in the days ahead in the 40s, afternoons comfortable in the 60s and 70s. It's going to be mainly a dry week, but by Friday we'll have areas of mist and drizzle in the forecast. And I'm calling it Goldilocks mm. Christmas. Ooh. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. Probably temperatures in chilly in the morning, but by Monday next week, the afternoon should be in the 60s. This is beautiful. 70 and sunny in the middle of December. Pretty nice. Enjoy your Sunday, everyone. Have a great day.